Electromagnetic pulse that can cripple everything from stoplights to computers to the defense grid. An electromagnetic pulse attack, also known as an EMP, could be devastating. It could easily damage the country's critical infrastructure, especially the electrical grid. If a terrorist organization or North Korea or Iran detonated just a single nuclear weapon, a single nuclear weapon at high altitude over the United States, you know, it would destroy the electric grid and our critical infrastructures and put at risk the lives of up to 90% of the American people. You know, we all depend directly or indirectly. We all live directly or indirectly off of electricity. We're an electronic civilization. Ninety percent, let me repeat that, ninety percent of all Americans will die within 12 to 18 months after an EMP event. This study was done in 2008. Has an EMP is a short burst of electromagnetic energy that all nuclear explosions produce to varying degrees. A large EMP triggered over the United States from an orbiting nuke at the right altitude could fry the circuitry of cell phones, render electronic banking, automobile computers, railways, air traffic control, and airplanes themselves useless. Food would rot in refrigerators and in farm fields with no means of transporting agri-products to population centers. In the following weeks and months, a truly Mad Max world would evolve. Dr. Pry believes a naivete about EMP pervades the Western democracies where nukes are kept mostly out of sight and out of mind. But for totalitarian and authoritarian states, as in the case of Iran, and possibly North Korea, uh, the use of nuclear weapons is not only unthinkable, but in their Open source military doctrine, you know, they've written for years about being able to win a nuclear war, that you can fight a nuclear war. Adding to EMP worries, North Korea's recent... With no electric power, or the things that depend on electric power. Medical services wouldn't be available because they need electric power. Telephones wouldn't work. The traffic lights would stop working. Big traffic jam. Transportation would be shut down. Electronic funds transfer wouldn't work, so you wouldn't get your paycheck. You wouldn't be able to use your credit card. Food stocks would run out very quickly. Everything we know about life today that makes it convenient and efficient would be shut down. The day after an EMP attack, the configuration of the country would be more like that around 1800. The problem is that the country had a very small population at that time compared to the 300 million people who live here today. There would be a real challenge to keeping our population even alive, much less strong and viable after a high altitude EMP event. What would you do in the case of an EMP? Electromagnetic pulse. A burst of radiation that knocks out every electrical system in the country. Impending doom. What you reading, Dad? <laughs> Honey, everything's fine. There's nothing to worry about. When things go south, the sheeple will clean out every supermarket in town. Typical sheeple. So, what have you learned so far from our post-apocalyptic movie marathon? Guys who call themselves preacher or deacon are very bad. Water is money, unless gasoline is money, and even though lots of things are razor sharp, no one ever shaves. Hollywood has taught you well, my son. Here it is, Homer. The Springfield Prepper's top secret bug out retreat. Wow! Your end of the world is better than my during the world. Homer, we all know America's collapse is about three months away. Six. The reason I'm here today is to encourage the U.S. Congress to take action to protect our country from its most imminent threat. Electricity would cease, the internet would go down, and the banking system. If the worst should happen and an EMP goes off, life is going to be miserable. Miserable for the people who have prepared, and it will be absolutely awful for those who haven't prepared. A lot of people are going to die either by starvation, lack of medical attention, diabetics will die because their medication can't be refrigerated, and people will die because of unpreparedness or just downright evil in people killing to get whatever they need. So there's many factors to prepare for an EMP. I'm just going to talk about a few of them here, and you should do more research than just listen to this video. Now, there's uncontrollable factors like 
what type of EMP weapon it was or how close it was to where you live or the Earth's magnetic field or geography, all that stuff applies, but you can't control it. So what can you control? Well, things like food. Store food away. There's not going to be any freight coming through. Grocery stores only have what they what they have out on their shelves. Farms are not going to be able to produce large-scale farms anyway because they have huge machinery that an EMP will take out. Also, cooking. Get a solar oven. Solar ovens work just as well as a normal oven. You can bake bread, cook meat, all kinds of things, and there's all kinds of people online showing how to make them, or you could just buy one already made. Water. Water is crucial. Water is more crucial than food. You have to have water, and it only takes a few days before people get psycho if they don't have water. Okay, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. We're going to talk about a Faraday cage. If you've never heard of it, it was invented by a man who lived in the 1800s, Michael Faraday. Basically, it protects your electronics from an EMP. There's a lot of people online showing you how to make Faraday cages. If you want to keep a car, some 1980s vehicles, but 1970s and earlier are cars that are resilient to EMP effects. One of the best options, however, is to get a bike. And also get a bike trailer. You'll also want to be able to communicate abroad and locally. You can get your hands on an old radio, an old ham radio preferably with the vacuum tubes, and also you want to get some walkie-talkies with rechargeable batteries and a solar-powered battery charger. Keep these in some type of EMP bag or Faraday cage. Print any photos, any files, any documents. You'll also want to consider either getting how-to books or printing off instructions and directions of first aid techniques, survival techniques, cooking recipes, all of that kind of stuff that you just take for granted that you can just Google, but if it goes off, you won't have any of that information. Burn all of your photographs and video files and everything onto CDs and DVDs. And if you have an old computer, put that in a Faraday cage. This civilization of ours that we're so proud of, this civilization with its so-called civilized behavior, you ever stop and realize how fragile all this is? How fragile the whole structure, how easily it could all just break right down? Just break right down. Wouldn't take much. Probably happened in less than two years. Wouldn't take much well, to throw us right back into barbaric times. All you'd have to do would be eliminate electricity. That's all. But, but completely eliminate electricity. So, no electricity, no lights. You're back to candles and lanterns, campfires and bonfires. Batteries couldn't be recharged. Generators couldn't be refueled because fuel is pumped electrically. So is water, by the way. So no lights, no fuel, no water. No computers. And computers run everything. And among the many things computers run that operate on electricity are all of these security systems. Police wouldn't help you. They'd be gone at the first sign of trouble. They'd be home protecting their own families. So would the Army and the National Guard. You'd be alone. You'd be on your own. You'd be SOL and JWF. Shit out of luck and jolly well fucked. Shit out of luck and jolly well fucked. 